The next part of Surah Al-Fatiha is for the Abd, it's for the slave, right? It's for the slave. So again, the first part, Allah is telling us about his name and his attributes, who he is. The second part is for the Abd, certain things that we're supposed to ask for, right? And he's telling us what to ask for, the things that are beneficial for us to ask for, so therefore we should ask for them, inshallah. In the next part, Allah Subhanahu wa says, Right? Only you, Allah. Only you, na'abudu. Right? Only you, we worship. Right? And only you, we seek help and forgiveness. Okay? So in the next part, again, this is the beginning of what the slave is supposed to ask for. Allah is telling us what it is that we should ask for. Right? The things that are beneficial for us, the things that we need in our life. So the next part of Allah says that we're supposed to say, Only you do we worship. Okay? So again, this is part of Tawheed. The oneness of Allah's worship. Right? The oneness of Allah's Ibadah. Right? We worship only Him. We bow down only to Him. Right? And we seek help and forgiveness only from Him. Nobody else. This is Tawheed. Who do we worship? Allah. Who do we turn to for help and assistance? Allah. Who do we ask forgiveness from? Allah. Who do we make dua to? Allah. When we need aid and assistance, when we need help for something, who do we ask? Allah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that dua is ibadah, right? To make supplication, to call out, is ibadah, right? So we don't say, oh, so-and-so help me. Oh, so-and-so help me. We don't call out to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't call out to the saints. We don't call out to our forefathers. We call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? To call out to anybody else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk, right? It's intercessions with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have to go to the confession box. We don't have to go through intermediaries or intercessors. We don't have to go to intercessors. We're seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah. We ask forgiveness from Allah. So Allah is saying, only you, Ya Allah, do we worship. You are the focal point of worship. You are the one that we bow down to. You are the one that we submit to. You are the one that we do all these actions for. Nobody else. We don't do actions for nobody else. We don't do things to be seen. We don't do things to show off. Well, I'm trying to impress so-and-so. Well, I'm trying to impress so-and-so. I'm trying to look good for so-and-so. No, the only person that we're supposed to be trying to impress is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that we do is for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Him, right? To seek His countenance, to seek His pleasure, right? To be saved from the hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And only you do we seek help and assistance and forgiveness from, right? You need something, Allah says, ask Him. You want something, ask Him, right? There's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with regards to envy or jealousy, right? Or the evil eye, al ain. When there was a man, he had nice skin and long hair, and they were out, the Sahaba, they were out somewhere, and they were bathing. And there was another man that was looking at this one man, he had nice skin or nice hair, and he gave him the evil eye. He was jealous of him because of his skin or because of his hair, right? And the evil eye is real. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al ain haq There's truth, there's haq in al ain in the evil eye. So this man broke out into a swoon and he became sick, right? And so the news got back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked him, who did al ain on this person, right? And so in that time, the people that feared Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they feared that things would be revealed about them, so they would tell on themselves. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I did al ain right? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the man to make wudu, Right, and use the water from the wudu to cure the person, so forth and so on. But at the end of the hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Do not be jealous of your brothers. Do not be envious of your brothers. Right, make du'a for your brother. If you see something good in your brother, right, make du'a to Allah to increase it in that thing that Allah has blessed him with, and then ask Him who gave it to him to give it to you. Right. So we're not jealous or envious, and we don't play or hate." Right? In Islam, we're not supposed to. That's why I said, want for your brother what it is that you want for yourself. He said, if you see something good in somebody, don't hate him, don't envy him, but make dua for him that Allah increases him in it, 
and then ask the one who gave it to him to give it to you, right? Because we may do all we ask help and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And it also, too, this, this brings about when we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses somebody with something or we hate or envy something that the next person has, we have to understand that that means that you hate and envy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the one that gave it to that person. So when you hate something, that means that you do not agree upon the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are denying Allah's color. You are hating Allah's color because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the next person with something. So really you're hating Allah. That's what Rasulullah so said. Don't hate, don't envy your brother, but ask him, the one who gave it to him, and make dua for your brother. Remove the jealousy and envy by making dua for your brother. Right? Want for your brother or sister what it is that you want for yourself. The same way that if you was in charge or if you were leading something, and if you had a nice car or you had property or whatever it may be, you had nice clothes, and you wanted people to love you and don't hate on you, the same way if somebody else had them same things, then however you want to be treated, then that's the same way you should treat them. If you want help and support, you should help and support the next person. Won't forget whether what it is you want for yourself. So again, Ya Allah, after understanding all these things that you told me about, that you are Rahman, Al Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you're the Lord in the fashion of all things that again you followed up with, Al Rahman, Al Rahim, again showing the magnitude of your mercy. And that you are Malik Yomidin, that you are the king, the authority of the dead judgment, that you are the one, you know what I'm saying, that will decide what go to heaven and hell. Then Allah's going to say, say, after knowing all of these things, understand your Allah, you are the only one that I will worship. And you are the only one that I see help and forgiveness from because you are Rabbi Alameen. You are the Lord of the fashioner, sustainer of all things. All worship belongs to you. So therefore, what? I seek. Your aid and your sister. Then what's the next thing we ask for? Oh Allah, guide me to the Salat the Mustaqim, right? Guide me to the straight path, right? Guide me to the straight path. The significance of the word ihdina, right? Ihdina is an amr form, which means a command form, which means you're commanding Allah's father to do something. Or you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with conviction. Ya Allah, guide me. Guide us to the Salat al Mustaqim. Right? It's in a command form. So you're asking, you're pleading, you're, 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 you're being uh, uh, diligent in your asking. You're asking with conviction. Ya Allah, guide us to the Salat al Mustaqim. So we're saying, after understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, only one worthy to be in worship, the only one that we ask seeking help and forgiveness from. Then the next thing that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because remember, this is for the abd. This is for the slave. These are the things that we need. We say, Ihdinis sirat al mustaqim. O Allah, guide us to the straight path. So we're asking Allah, O Allah, because you are in control of all things, you're the fashion of all things, everything's in your decree. Guide us to the straight path because guidance is from who? Guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask a lot of guidance because if we allow ourselves to be led by our own nafs or to be guided by what it is that we want, it said that should would be a straight, right? Because Allah Subhanahu said that the nafs, your nafs, it is inclined to do evil, right? We're inclined to do evil. But Allah Subhanahu said in the Quran, and barely if Allah wishes to guide someone, it is He who opens their heart to Islam. So if Allah Subhanahu wants you to be guided, it is He who opens your heart to Islam, right? Because guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're told in the hadith, in the tafsir, explained in the Salat al Mustaqim, right? Guide us to that straight path, right? Because there's many paths. As Rasulullah said, there's many multiple hadiths. But the first hadith that we'll talk about is what Rasulullah said that the Salat al Mustaqim is a straight road, right? And on that road, there are devils on the side with windows, and they're calling you. To come off the Salat al Mustaqim and through those windows of the Haram things. We have Shaitan beckoning you to come off the Salat al Mustaqim. Remember, Shaitan said that he'll be what? On the Salat al Mustaqim, right? Trying to take you off the Salat al Mustaqim. So he said the Salat al Mustaqim is the straight road, and on the left or the right side of that road are Shaitan's trying to call you off the Salat al Mustaqim. But at the head of that road is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu so the Salat al Mustaqim is the path of Islam, submission, guided by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. 
So we say, oh Allah, guide me to the Salah of the Mustaqeen. We say, oh Allah, guide us to Islam, right? Because Allah supposed to say, if Allah was the guide someone, it is He who opens their heart to Islam. So we say, Ethi the Salah the Mustaqeen. Ya Allah, guide me to the straight path. What is the straight path? It is the path of Islam, right? Guide me to submission, right? Guide me to the submission, and at the helm or at the head of that road is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Ya Allah, guide me to that straight path. Ya Allah, guide me to Islam. Guide me to a submission. Guide me to following the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, keep me on that path. Guide me, because without your guidance, I will not be guided. Because guidance is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If Allah wishes to guide you, what? No one can lead you astray. If Allah was for you to be led astray, no one can guide you. Because guidance is from Allah spoke Allah. So every day we ask him, Because the reality of the matter is, we don't know if we're guided. So again, we're asking Allah spoke Allah, Guidance to the straight path. Because guidance is from Allah spoke Allah. We don't know if we're guided. Right? We don't know if we're guided. Every day we ask him, Every time we make salat, in every rakah, we're asking Allah over and over again, Oh Allah, God is to the Salat the Mustaqim because we never know if we're on the Salat the Mustaqim or not. Why? Right? It said that Shaitan said that he can mislead you and you will think that you're guided, right? But you'll be misguided. So we have to ever, we have to always keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God is to that straight path. God is to the path of Islam. God is to the Quran, right? Of the Sunnah. God is to. The path of Islam, guided by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to ask him daily because we never know when we'll slip. Because Shaitan said that he will be what? On the Salat al Mustaqim. He'll be on the path of Islam. So when you strive to be on the path of Islam, Shaitan will be right there trying to take you off the Salat al Mustaqim. So you got to be very mindful. Whenever you're trying to do the right thing, whenever you're trying to organize, whenever you're trying to unify, whenever you're trying to advocate Tawheed, whenever you're trying to advocate the ways of the Salah, Right? The first three generations trying to change the cycle. Understand that Shaitan will try to be on the Salat the Mustaqim. Every time you try to take two, three steps, he's going to try to knock you down. So Allah, God is to the Salat the Mustaqim. God is to the path of Islam. God is to be able to be of those who submit sincerely all the way. Kafir. Oh Allah. Blessed to be of those who are the believers, those who submit and enter into Islam sincerely and do not follow the footsteps, do not follow the dwellings or the callings of shaitan. Inna hu lakum mubin, for verily he is for you, and avowed it in you. So we ask him again, O oh Allah, God is to the Salat the Mustaqim. Next, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, defining or explaining what is the Salat the Mustaqim. He said, it is Salat the Mustaqim, Salat al-Ladina namda alayhim. God is to the straight path. God is to the path of those whom you have bestowed your ni'amah. Ni'amah. Right? Your bounties. Your blessings. Your grace. Ihdiris sarat al-mustaqim. Sarat al-ladina an-amda an-amda. Those who you have bestowed your ni'amah. Those who you have blessed. Those who have you given bounties. Those who you have shown your grace to. Right? Sarat al-ladina an-amda alayhim. This is the path that we want to be led to. The path of Islam, the path guided by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the path of those whom you have bestowed your bounties and your grace and your glory upon. Who are these people? And again, when we talked about the Tafsir, it understands that, or we understand that Tafsir, that the Quran may give an explanation of the Quran. Right? So we go to chapter 4, verse 69. Chapter 4, verse 69. Allah states in chapter 4, verse 69, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين Allah states, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, chapter 4, verse 69. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, they are the ones who are with those whom Allah subhanahu wa has bestowed His bounties and His ni'mah upon, those from among the prophets, those from among the truthful ones, those from among the martyrs, and those from among the righteous. So Allah subhanahu says, the ni'mah, 
those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed his bounty upon are those who first and foremost obey Allah, meaning the Quran, and obey the Rasul. So the first thing is those who obey the Quran and the Sunnah. Or Allah, those who you have bestowed your nitma upon, those who obey you, those who follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will be with those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed his nitma upon. Who are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those whom he has bestowed his nitma upon, Right? It is the prophets, it's the truthful ones, it's the martyrs, right? And the righteous. Okay? So we ask Allah to Allah to guide us to that path, first and foremost, of those who obey Allah in the Quran, guide us to the path of those whom Allah has bestowed his nitmah, his bounties upon. So therefore, we want to be on the path of the prophets, the Nabiyin. We want to be in the path of the truthful, the Siddiqin. We want to be in the path of the martyrs, the Shuhada. And we want to be in the path of the righteous, the Salihin. So for understanding when we ask Allah, it is Salat the Mustaqim. Every time we're making the Salat, every time we're saying the Fatiha, every time we're making this Dua, because again, inshallah, understand, uh, inshallah, understand that the Fatiha is a Dua. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That every time you say to Allah, it didn't set out the mustaqim, Allah got me to the straight path. What is the path? The path of Islam, guided by the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The path of those who have bestowed your nitma upon. Who, who are those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed his nitma upon that you're asking him to guide you like? You're asking him to guide you to the path of the prophets. So therefore, you must understand all the stories of the prophets. What did they do? What did they go through? What did the trials and tribulations that they went through? How did they handle those trials and tribulations? How were they patient? You're asking Allah to guide you to the path of the truthful people. So who are the ones that were truthful? What does it mean to be truthful? What does it mean that don't lie? What does it mean that don't be, li don't be a liar? What does it mean to be of those who have astounding character? Right? Then you're asking Allah to guide you to the path of the martyrs. So now we're talking about those who die in the cause of Allah, those who are shaheeds. So when you ask Allah to guide you to the straight path, you say, Allah, bless me to be a martyr. Bless me to walk the path of the martyrs. Okay, the martyrs are those who are, those who die in the cause of Allah. Those are the, the martyrs, the shaheeds. The Arabic word for martyr is shaheeds or the shuhada. So you're asking Allah for the Lord to bless you to be of those who, on the path of those who die shaheed. Those who are witnesses to Allah's truth, the shaheed. Then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you to be among what? The path of the righteous, the salihin. Who are the salihin? Every time you read an ayah in the Quran, it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the righteous. Right before that, it would give you a story about somebody and tell you about their characteristics and whatnot that they ended up with, and these are the righteous. So whatever you just read, whatever characteristics that you just read, whatever story that you just read, then inshallah, you want to inculcate whatever that they did to be of those of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless them to be called of those of the righteous. Then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you to be, again, the way of the prophets. So now I got to understand the story of the prophets. What did Yusuf alayhi salam go through? What did Ayyub alayhi salam go through? What did Suleiman alayhi salam go through? What did the Prophet Muhammad salam go through? What did Isa alayhi salam go through? What did Musa alayhi salam go through? So when I'm asking Allah to guide me to the Salat of Mustaqeen, I'm also asking him to guide me to the path of these prophets and what they went through. When I say, Allah, guide me to the Salat of Mustaqeen, I'm asking Allah to guide me to the path of the Shuhada, guide me to the path of the Shaheeds, guide me to the path of the martyrs, guide me to the path of those who die in the cause of Allah. For the law. This is what you're asking for when you say, If it is Salat of Mustaqeen, Salat al and Alayhim, when you say it sincerely, so when you understand what it is that you're asking for, that's why it's so profound. Fatiha, man, it's the Rukia, it's the Shifa, it's the Hum, it's the seven off repeated verses. It's deep. So it's just deeper than Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Dhamin, Rahman Rahim, Allah Akbar. It's deeper than that. When you understand what it is that you ask it for, I'm asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to guide me to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to guide me to the path of the prophets. I'm asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to guide me to the path of the Shuhada, those who die in the cause of Allah, those who put their life on the line for the cause of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is what I'm asking for in the Fatiha. Every day when I'm reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, every day when I pray, this is what I'm asking for. When I understand what it is that I'm asking for. Right? Ihdin al-Sirat al-Mustaqeen, Ya Allah. 
Oh Allah, guide me to the Salat al Mustaqeen. What is the Salat al Mustaqeen? Salat al Ladeen and Amda Alayhim, the path of those whom you have bestowed your ni'mah upon. Who are those that Allah subhanahu wa bestowed his ni'mah upon? Then the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous. Oh Allah, bless me to be on that path. Bless me to follow what it is that they follow. Bless me to follow their footsteps. So if you're sincere in that and you start going through trials and tribulations like they did, then just say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. I made it. I'm here. I'm doing it. Right? Don't get, oh, why I me? Mean? Why is this happening? What do you mean, why? Why not? This is what you asked for. Oh, Allah, got me to the Salat of the King. Got me to the path of the prophets. So now you start going through trials and tribulations, right? The Prophet Muhammad says, I'm saying that those who are the most tested are who? The prophets. Those who are the most tested with trials and tribulations are the prophets, right? Then those who are next to faith after them, then those next to faith after them. So we asking Allah to guide me to the path of the prophets. I'm going to follow the way of the prophets, and we say that the prophets are the ones that are the most tested. So therefore, guess what? I'm going to go through trials and tribulations and tests. I'm not going to have an easy life. It's not going to be hunky-dory, kumbaya, everything. Ooh, it ain't going to be like that. It's going to be tough, right? I don't know why we keep going through all of this. Because we're on the way to the prophets. What do you think Yusuf Alayhi? How do you think Yusuf Alayhi Salaam felt? He was a prophet. He was blessed with dreams. His daddy was a prophet. His daddy's daddy was a prophet. That's why I say Yusuf Alayhi had the best lineage. His daddy was a prophet. His daddy was a his daddy's daddy was a prophet. And his daddy's daddy daddy was a prophet. Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. Right? Ishaq Alayhi Salaam. Yaqub Alayhi Salaam. Yusuf Alayhi Salaam. Why am I going through this? All of my family are prophets. My grandfather, my great grandfather, my daddy, they're prophets. Why am I going through this? But yet he went to prison for like 13 years. Huh? Yusuf Alayhi Salaam. You don't think that he felt pain? But we say, oh Allah, God is to the path of the prophets. We're going to say, God is to the path of Yusuf and Islam. And yet, we, some things happen to us, and right now we want to ask, like, why is this happening to me? And you, and Islam, he was hit with a fitna, a skin disease. Didn't do nothing wrong. Allah says he's the best of the best. He's the prophet of patience. 19 years afflicted with skin disease, leprosy. Right? An example for us. They got plagues going on right now, and all kinds of things. What did he do? He remained patient. Right? So we ask Allah, enter the Salat al Mustaqim, Salat al Ladin and Amta Alayhim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the next part. Gayrul Makdubi Alayhim wa Lakbar.